We are currently in um, the three weeks of mourning leading up to Tisha B'Av, which is the day the, the temple, the Beit HaMikdash, was destroyed. Um, so I want to read an Agadah with you, Rav Yonatan, um, about mourning. Um, and this Agadah um, is not what you think it's going to be. Um, it's, it's, it's very surprising. And again, the rabbis are very creative in the way they tell stories. So let's read the story and then we're going to talk about it. So this is from the Gemara Bava Batra, 60b. Tanur Rabbanan, our rabbis taught, when the temple was destroyed for the second time, large numbers in Israel became ascetics, taking oaths on themselves neither to eat meat nor to drink wine. Rabbi Yeshua got into a conversation with them and said to them, my sons, why do you not eat meat nor drink wine? They replied, shall we eat meat which used to be brought as an offering on the altar? Now that this altar is not being used, shall we drink wine which used to be poured as a wine offering on the altar but it no longer is used? Rabbi Yeshua said to them, If that is so, we should not eat bread either, because the meal offerings have stopped. Rabbi Yeshua said, Sorry, they said, That is so, and we can manage with fruit. In other words, we're not going to eat bread anymore now. <laughs> um, we should not eat fruit either, Rabbi Yeshua said, because there is no longer an offering of first fruits. Mm. Then we can manage with other fruits, they said. But, Rabbi Yeshua said, We should not drink water, because there is no longer any ceremony of the pouring of water. <laughs> To this they could not find an answer. So Rabbi Yeshua said to them, My sons, come and listen to me. We should not, not to mourn at all is impossible because the blow has fallen. To mourn too much is also impossible because we do not impose on the community a hardship which the majority cannot endure. That's the end of the story. Now this story is a fascinating story because we have here, on the one hand, a rabbi, on the other hand, the masses. And it's this conversation between them. And something bad happened to the Jewish people. The temple is destroyed. So the community, which is actually a very positive way of thinking about the community, wants to be spiritual, wants to be religious. They're, they want to change their ways. Um, so they start forbidding things on themselves. It's kind of like if you, know, you did something bad, you don't think you deserve to go out for a movie or to a restaurant. You, know, you say, you know, I need to discipline myself. So they start restricting themselves. And, and Rabbi Yeshua says, wait, wait, wait a little bit of hypocrisy here. If you're going to restrict yourself here, you should restrict yourself here. Go all the way. And once they go all the way, they realize, no way. Life is not worth it if we're going to do it all the way. So it's almost like in this story, the rabbi is saying, you guys are being fanatical. Any thoughts? It's an amazing midrash, Agada. I have not seen that one before. We, unfortunately, as a people, know very well about mourning through the last 2,000 years, 3,500 years. Uh, since the first temple was destroyed, here we get a depiction of life. After the second temple was destroyed, my first point is I, I have a sense of admiration for those who took on or wanted to take on uh, these kind of humrot, these uh, stringent positions of, about not engaging in, in, in basar and yayin. Um, you know, we say during the Chagim, in simcha ela basar v'yayin, there's no joy except for eating wine and uh, or eating meat and drinking wine, because these are the things that were brought on the on the on the altar, and now we don't have an altar anymore. So how can we enjoy these things? The whole connection to them is is lost. You actually sent me a, a beautiful piece about Rav Shagar about the context in the food that we eat. I've shared that several times. Uh, the context that we eat these foods in, challah for example, gives it a totally different experience and, and really mahut, a completely different ever, essence. So how can we eat this food without the, the context of the temple? So was it Rabbi Yeshua that, yeah. uh, that comes to them? Rabbi Yeshua says, you know, Look, we have to hold on to the loss. We can't forget this. And by the way, the fact that we do hold on to the loss of the temple, even still today, and we sit on the ground and we cry and we say these, these depressing uh, poems um, a day, which is very challenging on, on, I think, many levels, as far as connecting to it on an individual level. How do we do that back in Eretz Israel today? But, but, you know, there has to be a remembrance of it. That holding on to the loss will carry it with us. And as long as we hold on to the loss, the idea that can be rebuilt will keep it in place. That historical memory is so critical to who we are. And I think Rabbi Yeshua and I think the sages at that time understood that. If we look at Seder night, right, all the Zecha um, 
we are constantly reminding ourselves mm. of what was so that we can please God in the future, bring it into what, what will be. On the other hand, if that goes too far, then we're just not alive. We're, 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 we're dead in a way. I know it's kind of like... Um, it's kind of like this pop psychology way of talking about singles. You know, in our society today, singles get married a lot later than they used to. And I was 29 when I got married. Um, now, you know, young people, 30s, it's not uncommon to be sting- single and still dating. Um, so there's a lot of pop psychology out there about find yourself now. Find your joy now, things that give you happiness and fulfillment now. And, you know, don't just wait around to get married and then your happiness and fulfillment will come then. No, you know, you, you have to, whatever state you're in, find what gives you a sense of aliveness and ability to contribute. So, you know, in some way, I think that that's what Rabbi Yeshua is trying to explain to I them. find what's interesting about Rabbi Yeshua is you're expecting the rabbi to be trying to get them to do more laws and more discipline. And in this story, at least, we have the rabbi saying, slow down, um, you guys are gonna go too fast, you're gonna f- you know, push yourself all the way off and you're not gonna like anything anymore. You know, the community can't stand by these laws. So I think um, this is a very important idea. And actually, Rav Menachem Fruman, um, who was a great religious Zionist rabbi who passed away about 10 years ago, no, even shorter, maybe five years ago, um, who was, I think he was the head rabbi of Tekoa, he used to say, um, you know, you expect to go to a rabbi to get like serious ideas, and he says everyone's too serious anyway. You should go to a rabbi, a tzaddik, to learn how to laugh. <laughs> In other yes. words, see the context and what you're doing, and be able to laugh at yourself. So maybe Rabbi Yeshua is kind of like the tzaddik, the rabbi, the spiritual, you know, guru who says, "Calm down, you guys are becoming way too serious, and it's coming from a good place. We're going to ruin your life." And I think this is obviously um, very apparent in people who are about chula. Um, who you know they start becoming more religious they, they didn't grow up in it they take on things very very fast and be, life becomes very serious for them and often actually the people who are born religious have to say slow down calm down you know you want to be in love with God and Torah mitzvot for your whole life not just for this year um, so I think Rabbi Yeshua in this story is saying Let, let's play with this idea you want to keep doing restrictions we'll restrict yourself more and more and more and more and when they realized they came to the conclusion themselves, by the way, in the story. It says they realized it themselves. When they realized, whoa, life wouldn't be worth living. So then he says, now let me teach you a lesson. And the lesson is we do need to mourn, but we also not mourn too much. And it's that, that very delicate balance of having goals, but not taking the goals too seriously. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> and two pieces in, in Rev Cook, I think, touch on what it is that I'm hearing from you. Number one, in, in his... Enayan Brachot, I don't remember the piece where he speaks about this, but, but he says that Chazal had a very clear understanding of what was appropriate and was, what was not, what was inappropriate. In other words, they understood that balance. They understood human nature to the extent that they would put something only in place as a gazera or, or a halakha if they understood that fit with the, the, spiritual makeup of, of, of the human being and it didn't push him or her too far or not enough. So they had that sensitivity and, and it seems like Rabbi Yeshua is illustrating exactly that point that they had that sensitivity to understand the, the, what would be too much and, and uh, what would be not enough. The other point is, uh, maybe you can remember where this is in, in Rev Cook, but he talks very openly about the need for religious people to be in, in dialogue with secular people because if you spend too much time in the Beit Midrash you get abnormal mm-hmm. you lose perspective on what the common man is talking about what, what's going out there in the street and, and a sense of freedom and openness that people who aren't religious experience in, in, in their daily lives so he didn't want them to lose out on their sense of walking in the world in a, in a normal human way. Don't get too from, right? Don't put on, you know, yeah. uh, too many layers of, of spiritual garb so that you don't have contact with the outside world and have a sense of aliveness, right? We didn't... didn't Hi, wanna, him. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to put ourselves in a, in a, in a box for 2,000 years till, till, till the temple is, is rebuilt. We have I think, to walk in the world. I think just on a psychological level, I love what you said, I think just on a psychological level, any person who's trying to work on themselves and grow in any fast in their life, it doesn't have to be religious right now. We can think about diets. Um, when you push yourself too hard, 
it doesn't work because life's not worth living now. So you give up the diet. You know, you say, I'm never ever, I remember when I was in yeshiva when I was like 22, you know, I went on this like rugelach diet. I said, I'm never going to eat um, any, uh, rugelach is like this beautiful chocolate croissant, like, you know, melt in your mouth from the machine. From the I said, I'm never going to have a rugelach at a kiddush on a Shabbat morning because I just overeat. So I like forbid myself. And I remember I would go, to these kiddushes and like sit in the corner with my health food cookie <laughs> and and I remember it just didn't work because I would you know I would just like binge and just eat so much rugelach mm. later that day because mm. I hadn't done it in a healthy way um, and I think maybe that's what another p- a part of this story a message that the rabbis wanted to put down in this story it's not just about mourning it's about when you become serious in a goal you have to do it in a balanced way and moderation as well as goals that combination I think that's that's magic